this church began as a Bible study at the Women's Club in 1954, up in uh, Pastor Rayford was the one who got that started, I believe. And is that right, Ken? You, I mean, you, Stan, you know that. But yeah. yeah. And then in 1956, they had their first meeting in the A building. That's the office building now. 1959, after the first four years, they had accumulated 49 baptisms, eight deacons, and they changed their name to First Southern Baptist Church. And their pastor was that time as the Gus Prince. In 1961, they dedicated the B building in 63. 63, Pastor Fuller got appointed to the foreign mission field and he became an international missionary. And then they called this gentleman over here, Pastor Stan Fogel. I'm glad they did. 1964, they established a mission church. The Valley Vista Baptist Church was established as a mission of this church. 67, the seat building was built. That's the building where they have a children's room upstairs and a kitchen and fellowship hall downstairs. 69, we had a bus ministry. Let's see, how old were you in 1969? You weren't. He weren't born yet. Yeah. It's bad English, but it's a fact. He weren't born yet. We had a bus ministry in this church then. 71, they called Pastor Alex Campbell. I'm going to go through these quickly because you can read. In 1972, they began the XYZ ministry, which has continued for 43 years. They have a service in rest homes throughout our community every week. We go to the homes, we sing songs, hymns, and that's what those people know, it's hymns. So we just sing hymns and we have a Bible devotional. 1974, we dedicated the Worship Center D. You know, the building that has the upstairs, downstairs, used to be no floor in it. it used to be just the Worship Center. But they planned to install floors later. 77, they called Dr. Charles McKay. He was the interim pastor. 77, they called Pastor Buddy Reeves. And during that time, they purchased the rest of the land that went all the way to San Jacinto Street. Fill that out. In 79, they did a building program for this building. 750 seat work worship center. In 1980, they had two worship center services still going in the previous building because they couldn't hold them all. And they had a mission church with Pastor Luis Arroyo and his dear wife is here today. Is he preaching this morning? He's at, at a men's retreat. At a men's retreat. He escaped. <laughs> <laughs> she sings wonderful. We should have got you up here to sing. Oh, what a blessing. Luis is blessed. Let's say that. So the church is still going, the church that was started as a mission. And in 84, they dedicated this current building. Uh, in 86, the city of Hammond required the church to add cinder block walls all around the seven acres. Very expensive project, they paid for, paid for that. 86, they licensed Jeffrey Woods to the gospel ministry and he went to Wayland Baptist University. That is a testimony of this church that numerous times Young men were called to the ministry, and the church saw that and affirmed them and scholarship them and, or wrote letters to affirm them to go on to school. That's happened numerous times. In 88, they completed the preschool building. In 89, Pastor Buddy Reeves left, and Dr. Thurman George, those of you who know him, came as a, an interim. Uh, in uh, 1990, Dr. David Hall came as a pastor in March, and he resigned in September. This is one of the sad, darkest days in the history of our church, for this church. But one of the things that happened as an outshoot of that is the Hemet Valley Baptist Church was started. And what's interesting today about that is, for the kingdom, men and women, boys and girls, come today who don't know anything about all that. That's 25 years ago. Don't know anything about it, and people are getting saved and led to become disciples. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose, right? So, the scripture. 1991, they called Pastor Julian Clark and they started a homebound ministry. In 91, they also endorsed Jeffrey Woods. He was continuing. Went on to Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. 
In 94, David Daffern was called as the Minister of Education and Youth. George Engel came in 95 as a Minister of Music. 96, the church issued a church vocational scholarships to three men, Aaron Daffern, Joshua Daffern, and George Elric. So we had three young men that went, went on to school. Um, in 96, David Daffern resigned, accepted the senior pastor at a church in Arizona. Um, in 97, Pastor Julian Clark resigned. And this is the church's really one of their weird days. They actually called me as their interim pastor. I came here as a vice president at Cal Baptist, and I came here just to fill the pulpit while they're searching. And I made the mistake on my first day of saying, we need to fill these pews. <laughs> Somebody said, we? <laughs> Be careful what you say behind the pulpit. In 98, they installed me as a senior pastor, and they've not been able to get rid of me since. <laughs> In 2000, John Miller was sponsored to go to seminary, another young man. In 2000, John Carter was called as a music, music minister. Shekinah Missionary Baptist was also launched here. Mary Ellen Van Austinbridge came as a minister of music. Robert Poe was called the next year as a minister of music. Then 2006, Mountain View Community Church leased facilities and that launched as a new church, which became Diamond Valley uh, Baptist Church. In 2008, Mark Nelson came as an interim minister of music and he just keeps coming back. And sitting next to him, I have a laser, but I won't shine it on you. Sitting next to him is Bart Young. And Bart, when were you minister of music here? 82 to 90. And he's singing in the choir because Mark wouldn't let him go. <laughs> so you have to sing. Pretty cool, isn't it? I'm glad you're here. And your wife's sitting, singing over here. Praise God, this is wonderful. Yeah, it's great. Put them to work. Mark warned him, he said, don't go to lunch with Pastor Rick and put you to work. I said, it's too late. 2009, Robert Zitt came as our first family life minister. In 2010, we replaced the roof. This roof leaked since it was built from 1984. <laughs> in 2010, just like Pat, you have a son, Kurt, I have a son, Jonathan, and we used to come out here with 55 buckets and try to find where the drips were going to go. We would set, every time it rained, we set 55 buckets in here. <laughs> Finally, we replaced the roof. I gotta say, praise God, hallelujah, we've got a roof that does not leak. And then the church, Diamond Valley, moved to a new location, and Bob Zitt resigned. He got to work his eyesight, which permit him to continue. And Dr. Dewey Squires, sitting right over here, was called as our associate pastor for family ministry. And uh, I delivered a sermon in 2012. The sermon was from Proverbs 3, uh, chapters, verses 5 through 10. And explain we must honor the Lord with all our possessions. That's what the scripture says. And uh, Parkway Baptist Church needed a place to meet. And our church agreed unanimously to vote to invite them to come and use the facilities here. And uh, they accepted. And they began meeting in our location. And I'm so delighted they had a place to meet. I'm going to have Pastor Kirk come up and when I get him to the present. We're almost there. We burn the note. We are debt free today. People have heard me say that I would not resign as pastor until we were debt free. Everybody started rumoring when we were debt free that I was leaving. And I said, I, it's not the only thing I said. I just said, I want to be debt free. Do you know what these people want to do? Take out another loan. <laughs> They won't let me go. <laughs> so, 2013, they elected a documents committee, which uh, in, almost interminably began rewriting our documents, and it's completed, and we have some very, very outstanding documents for this church to protect it. And I delivered another sermon, 2 Peter 1.3, which says that Jesus Christ is our living hope because of his resurrection. And... Uh, I said that we need to be an example to our community. People aren't looking for, no disrespect, I'm a Southern Baptist, but no, people are not looking for a first Southern. 
they're looking for hope and our hope has to be based upon a relationship with Jesus Christ so we decided to change our name to Living Hope Baptist Church it's a very uh, biblical name 2014 we asked Steve Flynn to come as our minister of music the worships he came in the middle of a renovation I think and we finished renovating we paid 132,000 and change to complete renovating this facility here it's paid for in cash Mark Nelson called to serve as our business administrator in the same year it's a big year and Tom Catanzaro was ordained to the ministry of the gospel this year isn't that awesome it's like we're seeing progression young man you call Oh, and then you're here. I had to add that in. 60th anniversary, so 